Hello, so this is a little guide on how to make a butterfly house uh, for raising butterflies from the caterpillars all the way through to the chrysalis um, before they become butterflies. And the nice trick is that it's not doing anything uh, using anything fancy, it's just two strawberry fruit punnets held together and it has a little bit of mesh for ventilation in it. Um, so I did this just as a bit of fun, uh, but it kind of, you know, ticks the boxes for my own personal ethos on believing that you don't have to go out and buy everything. Uh, you can often just reuse or repurpose things from, from household sort of junk and things like this. So I was sort of really pleased with this. And also it just sort of felt sometimes when you have low, uh, you know, you didn't put a whole load of money into something, it's kind of, you know, a little bit easier if it doesn't quite work out. But luckily this one did. So, uh, and it even seemed to win a little prize uh, um, at the Instructables contest, which ended up in my son having a little t-shirt, which he's very excited about. So anyway, without further ado, uh, this is basically the final thing. Forgive a little bit of Photoshop to sh solve the, this is the issue of it looking a little hard to photograph the, the butterflies as they don't always behave themselves. Um, but nonetheless, the I've put a few links, which you can see in the bottom, on how to basically find uh, the caterpillars, what times a year are best, what plants, and also just a little bit of cautionary warning on, on you know, don't always touch the really hairy ones because they can be a bit irritant to skin. So, um, you know, know your area, knowing your caterpillars is a good idea. So, where to find caterpillars? A, a good clue, rather unsurprisingly, is leaves that have been munched. Um, or sometimes rolled up into a little shape like this, you can see. And you can see that it's rolled over, and there's often something that has sort of strung together various strands that have pulled it inwards into a little house. So I think these are good places to look. And again, if you just take two strawberry punnets, the trick is to find the ones that maybe have some of the bubble wrap in the bottom um, and don't have all the holes in. If they do have holes, it's no big deal. Just put a bit of sellotape over one side of the hole, then from the other side of the plastic, the inside, put another bit of tape so they end up sticking together. And that just means that they're not gonna crawl out in the middle of the night, which they most certainly will if you uh, don't do that. Um, so anyway, strawberries eaten, punnets made uh, impermeable to, uh, to caterpillars then they obviously still need a little bit of breathing space. And if anything, it's one of those things that's quite strongly recommended when caring for caterpillars uh, and, and indeed the larvae is that you do want an exchange of the air, otherwise it gets really sweaty and humid in there. God knows what they do, but you know, it's, it's definitely recommended. So all I did was just get a little bit of uh, mesh. You can buy this online at all sorts of crash stops. Um, but I, hazard to think you could probably just find some mesh in some other of the sort of fruit punnets um, or indeed you know you could use an old bit of sieve if you had that kicking around. So uh, making the mesh a bit safer you can appreciate once you've cut these out with scissors the edges are a little bit sharp. I just put a bit of masking tape around it but frankly any sort of tape would really do um, or even just gluing a bit of paper around it will do fine as well. So I fixed it in place with a bit more sellotape. Again, the benefit of using masking tape before it is that masking tape's kind of thick and gummy and it makes it easier for the sellotape to, to stick to the plastic. And actually it's one of those nice little uh, tricks that you realize that masking tape's good for certain things, sellotape's good for other things, and between the two you sometimes get a happy medium. So this is one of those nice examples. And so what I did to make the hinge <coughs> was basically stick a little bit of sellotape down the inside uh, of the of the two punnets and then allow them, as you can see here, to hinge in on themselves. And then as you can see when that folds over, I then stuck another bit on the back as well. So with that all done and I attached these little bulldog clips, which you can get in all sorts of stationery stores and they're quite simple to use, then it created a, a pretty much sort of under half a millimetre gap, seal all the way round, which the caterpillars just aren't that small so they don't get out. So that's it. Um, and then as I said in the guide that I included uh, in, the, in the guide itself, uh, it does recommend sort of putting in a little bit of uh, sort of leaf litter if you've been in a forest, just a little small handful will do, and then lots of nice fresh leaves. Um, and you get this stuff called, I think it's frass, which is basically what they poop out 
and uh, it's slightly cobwebby as well. So it's a mixture of pellets and cobwebs and stuff like that. And you, if you're getting a lot of caterpillars, uh, which I don't recommend having more than, say, 10 in a box like this, um, it gets a little busy. So just change that regularly when it starts to look a little bit chaotic in there. Um, but basically, this was like huge fun. Uh, and as you can imagine, seeing like the chrysalis suddenly come from nowhere uh, was just really kind of spectacular for, for my son because it was one of those things where we noticed the caterpillars slowing down on their eating and then they burrow into the into the leaf litter and then you see them almost like push out a little cave spin loads of little webs around themselves and then suddenly you see it harden up and become this little brown chrysalis so I think that's quite spectacular and then just before bedtime one night well, one of the the moths popped out and you know you hear it sort of bouncing around and so even though we probably should have let it out straight away we decided that we'll have a look at it in the morning and then released it um so i don't think there's too much animal cruelty in that they did have plenty to to drink in their little uh a little bottle cap of water as well and so yeah as you can see having a great time just before bedtime looking at it all and actually it's even one of those sort of you know, quite fascinating things to kids to even sort of just as chicks come out of eggs, why does why does a uh, you know a caterpillar go into one of these and then come out a butterfly? I mean, I still can't answer that fully myself, and that's kind of one of the fun bits of being a parent. Um, but either way, I just thought it was a really nice project, and I've had some really nice feedback from parents and kids who've had a go at this, um, not just in the UK but also in the states as well. And again, it's just one of those sort of fun, fun things to see how, you know, the whole life cycle goes on and on and on. Um, and I just thought it was a nice thing to share. So please give any comments um, or if you've done anything similar, I'd love to hear about it and uh, sharing any tips and tricks. So thanks very much. Bye.